Hi everyone, Stepan here. In this week's chess meditations, I'm going to talk about a very important subject uh, which could help you improve your ch uh, chess very fast and which many people, unfortunately, sometimes, including me, neglect. And that's correcting your mistakes by analyzing your games properly. Uh, one thing which uh, should be said at the start of this video is that if you could have a perfect brain or a computer or a chess engine uh, that learns by doing, then each mistake would be corrected automatically. It's, it's as if you make a mistake and then you see, okay, you do this, this, this and this, and then you remember it forever. Unfortunately, humans are not computers and we don't uh, work in that way and we often repeat our own mistakes. I'm going to show you how to analyze your own games and how to go about uh, improving on your mistakes to make sure you reduce the chances of your mistakes happening again. And uh, I have obviously repeated some mistakes, but most of them, uh, luckily for me, I, I managed to avoid because I found a learning method which helps me uh, helps me remember. Okay, as an example, I'm going to use one of my games, one of my defeats. Uh, you can also see the game in the Road to GM series. And this is one game which I didn't analyze in this way because I was in a tournament, I had no time. And this process usually takes five to six hours for me. And I'm very happy when I get to do that because then I improve on my play. Uh, one more thing why this is important is that it will help you prepare for your opponents in advance. If you do this for your games, once you encounter an opponent or you see that you are going to be playing an opponent who plays the exact same opening, then you can apply your, uh, your reasoning, your thinking and your new ideas to your next game. Now, how do uh, you go about doing that? Uh, the first thing I would like to emphasize is that you should always look at your game by yourself without the engine, without opening books or databases and try to think about your mistakes, try to find them yourself. Uh, so I, I think this part is crucial because then you are not going to be biased towards what something or somebody else says about the position and you are going to have a second chance to assess the move and think about whether this, that move was a mistake or not. This will give you sort of a second chance to play the move, which is which is great. And most people I know uh, tend to finish the game, turn on the engine, see where they went wrong and say, oh, I had mate in two here. Oh, I missed this or that. And oh, I lost because I did this. But they don't really understand. They need the engine to show them that. So my first piece of advice would be never use the engine until you have looked at the game yourself. So the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to go through the moves, even though I've already analyzed this game, but now I'm going to do it in depth. I'm going to think about the moves myself first. The second thing I'm going to do is look at some Grandmaster games at critical positions where I think my mistakes were made. Uh, then I'm going to use the engine uh, to check on my ideas. And then I'm going to write a small essay about each mistake. I think this part is crucial because writing things down often uh, solidifies the memory in your mind and helps you remember much better. There is a saying in Croatia, I don't know if that saying exists in English, uh, it could be roughly translated that a wise man uh, writes things down and the fool remembers. So that's basically the idea. If you think you can remember your mistake, mistakes, you are wrong. You might be a genius, you might be whatever, you're not going to remember anything. Writing things down uh, helps you memorize much better. I'm not going to write, to write the essay during the video because it might take too much time, but I'm going to tell you how I do that usually. And the last thing I would recommend is that you play some practice games trying to implement your new ideas. This is going to help you uh, uh, just break down this, uh, these new ideas and correct on your mistakes in your mind before you encounter the same position in a real game. So the game we played was a Tarash French. My opponent was an international master, Vladimir Bukal Jr., a very strong player. This was round one of the tournament. I was paired up. Uh, e4, I played e4, he played e6. d4, d5, I've played the Tarash French and he already surprised me on move 3. My opponent played h6 here. Uh, at the time, I thought this was just a way to get me out of normal theory, which it probably was. But then I realized that it's actually a useful waiting move in the French defense, especially in the Tarash variation, and that it often comes in handy regardless, uh, and that it's not really a waste of tempo. The normal moves here, which I was prepared for, was, were knight f6, after which I play this, and we get this variation. Sorry, 
uh, we got this variation with c5 c3 uh, the second move i was very much prepared for was c5 which is one of the most common moves uh, and the last move which uh, players with black sometimes play is this move taking here so these moves i was prepared for there were some other ideas with <coughs> sorry bishop e7 or bishop to d7 but i think you could rarely encounter this victor korchnoi tried these against karpov and had some success but h6 i've never seen so i was pretty uh, upset playing round one of a big tournament against a strong opponent and i'm out of theory on move three uh that's unfortunate and uh, after the game i did a brief analysis i recorded the video on the channel but i never did this whole thing so now let's go uh, in the game i played the move played the move bishop to d3 and my opponent continued with c5 so let's see uh, whether i could have improved on bishop to d3 uh, let's find some other moves so now i will try to think about the position without looking at the live book without looking at the engines or anything so moves that come to mind which i know are thematic for the opening are knight g to f3 definitely uh, this is a move because if he takes i can take uh, if he plays the move knight to f6 then i can play e5 getting into my normal tarash french after knight f to d7 i can either play bishop here or bishop to e2 depending on the position let's say bishop here 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 and this is now a transposition uh to the usual position I played, I play uh, with the exception of the knight not being on c6, but the move h6 being interposed. So I guess this is favorable for me. I would rather have the move h6 on the board than the knight staring at my uh, biggest weakness, the d4 pawn. So after h6, the move knight g to f3 is definitely a move. And I'm not going to say that my move bishop to d3 was a mistake because this is also a thematic, thematic move but knight g to f3 might have been an improvement after h6 uh, another logical move definitely is e takes d5 after e takes d5 i suppose i suppose he would take with the e pawn and let's say i play bishop to d3 now what's the difference difference with, between this position these positions bishop d3 here with these two pawns not being exchanged and bishop to d3 here with the pawns gone i'm not sure this looks uh simpler which might have been smarter to do against a strong opponent but let's say knight to f6 here knight g to f3 this sort of resembles the exchange french now so uh, in my essay i'm going to write down uh, after h6 uh, i forgot to mention that about the move knight g to f3 after knight g to f3 h6 knight g f3 and knight f6 c5 i'm going to write down knight g to f3 on move 4 for white after h6 leads to positions similar to the normal tarash with knight f6 e5 with the exception of the h6 pawn being played instead of, instead of knight c6 so this is what i'm going to write down after h6 ed5 i'm going to write down the positions with ed5 ed5 lead to positions which resemble an exchange french okay what other moves do i have h6 uh, c3 is a move definitely uh, defending my center Let's say my opponent plays c5, which is the most thematic move. Let's say knight g to f3, knight c6, normal moves. Uh, let's say bishop to d3. Uh, and now either c4 or c takes d4, c takes d4, d takes c4. Knight takes c4, he can't take here because in the Tarash French you have this check winning the queen. So if he takes with the knight, knight takes, queen takes, bishop check and he loses the queen. So for these positions, after h6, c3, I'm going to write down positions after h6 and c3 lead to an isolated queen spawn for white and positions uh, like this. So I'm not really thrilled about this. What other moves do I have after h6? Uh, I can consider the move e5, definitely. Uh, e5 c5 has to be played this now resembles the advanced french uh, with my knight being on d2 which is kind of strange so i'm going to write down uh, an advanced french with my knight on d2 is that good or not and they really need help here because i don't play the advanced french the problem is with moves such as h6 that your opponent often manages to transpose into an into a variation of the opening that you don't know because he managed to outsmart you okay so this is what i'm going to write down after uh, after h6 if i play e5 he might get me into an advanced french which i don't know how to play 
Okay, but let's go on. I think I've concluded what I've had to conclude about the move bishop to d3. So I've found substitutions for it. There is knight g to f3, there is e takes d5, there is c3, and one more move which I might look at is g3 uh, after h6, but I'm not sure. I've never played fianchetto positions against the French, so I'm going to skip this. This might actually enter some weird king's Indian attack with the pawn on d4. I, I, I'm not sure. But uh, coming back, bishop to d3, in my opinion, wasn't a bad move, and it's sort of thematic for the Tarash French, and okay. I expected my opponent to play c5, and he did play c5. Okay, and now, uh, once again, options. In the game, uh, I took e takes d5. <clears throat> Uh, the problem after c5, and what I know is the most thematic move, uh, is e takes d. Uh, in, in positions where my opponent doesn't play h6, so here after c5, this is the, the best move. This is the, the most common move. So in, this position, in these positions without h6 and bishop to d3 being interposed, e takes is the best move. After c5, I figured e takes d5 should be the best move here still. So I played that. What were my other options after c5? After e takes d5, uh, my opponent took with the e pawn, and then we entered the positions which I sort of know, but it's weird because usually the pawn isn't on h6 and my bishop is still on f1. So once I play this bishop to b5 check, which I played in the game, I'm actually wasting a tempo because I played this and this. But we are going to come back to that. So after c5, I'm going to write down e takes d5, which I played, uh, because of the idea I wanted to play loses a tempo because, because I have already developed my bishop from f1 to d3. And since I want to play bishop to b5 check in these variations with e takes d, e takes d, bishop to b5, there are thematic moves like queen, takes, queen to e2 check, etc. Uh, either bishop to d3 was a mistake or e takes d5 was a mistake because both of these moves together don't make any sense. So let's find some alternatives. Since I've already played bishop to d3, I think my move was a mistake. And uh, a normal alt alternative, of course, is knight g to f3 once again. Uh, here, my opponent would have either taking or playing c4. So let's say c4 first. After c4, bishop to e2 is forced. Uh, let's say knight to c6, the most common move. Let's say a castle here, everything is defended. Knight g to e7, for example. Knight f6 might be too risky. And what's this position like? I, I think this is quite good for me. Uh, so I'm going to write down, after c5, knight g to f3 is a solid move if my opponent plays c4. c4 sort of relieves the pressure of the d4 pawn and my position is okay. After knight g to f3, he doesn't have to play c4, which I think is a bad move in the French in general. He can take uh, on d4, of course, which is the best move. c takes d4, knight takes d4, let's say knight to c6 challenging my knight. I can either take or retreat or defend. I think I want to take, takes takes, let's say a castle, so I'm writing down after c5, knight g to f3, if my opponent takes on d4, I'm going to leave him with a strong semi-slav center, uh, and I usually use patterns for writing my essays down, and a semi-slav center means c6, uh, d5, and e6 for me, and an, an easy exchange of the bishops with, let's say, queen b6, bishop a6, and my opponent has no problems, so I don't really like the move after c5, I don't like knight g to f3 because of taking. So I'm going to write down after c5 in this position, uh, knight g to f3 I don't like because he's going to have a strong center. What are my other moves? I can definitely defend the pawn, let's say c3. And now he should take cd4, cd4, let's say d4, uh, knight e4. He still can't take the pawn, bishop check wins the queen. Let's say bishop b4 check, developing with tempo. Uh, knight c3, he still can't take. Let's say knight f6. So after c3, once again, I'm going to write down c3, same as, as in the last variation after h6, leads to positions where I have an isolated queen's pawn. Okay, what are my other options? After c5, definitely taking uh, on c5 is an option, instead of taking here. And after d takes c5, bishop takes c5, knight g to f3 normal developing move, knight f to 6 normal developing move, I don't think I want to play e5, I want to keep this tension, let's say a castle, knight c6, ed, ed, I have rook e1 check, 
Okay, so I'm going to write down after c5, d takes c5 makes much more sense and they have a more solid position. Let's move on. c5, I did play e takes d5, so what can you do? e takes d5 and my idea, bishop to b5 check, was played. Alternatives to bishop to b5, which I think was a mistake. And now bishop to d3, bishop b5 check were a mistake and e takes d5 were a mistake in my mind. So I'm going to write that down. Bishop b5. Okay, and uh, I'm not going to go into uh, into the other moves. I lost the game. You can you can watch the whole game uh, on the channel. This will this will take too much time when the variations start to branch out. That's why I said that it usually takes me five to six hours. So this will be my first step. I'm going to go through the whole game, writing down my ideas and each possibility I find to be sensible. After that, I'm going to do the following. Uh, you can do this in chess base, you can do this in many databases. Leeches has one implemented. So once you you are in Leeches, you have this book icon, opening explorer. You click on that and then uh, you are going to find uh, strong the strongest games, top games, if you scroll down. So in this position, let's say uh, I'm on move h6, I'm going to see what the strongest game was. I'm going to click on that. Uh, Anand Nakamura 2014 was a draw. Melkumian Carlsen was a win for Carlsen. I'm going to look at that game. Okay, just click on the game. Look at the game. So now we are looking at Melkumian versus Carlsen. Melkumian is 2600. So let's see what Melkumian played. He did play knight g to f3. And then I'm going to go back to my analysis uh, and see what I thought about knight g to f3 here after h6. Uh, after h6, knight g to f3 was definitely one of my moves. And I had knight f6, e5, knight fd7, bishop e2. This was one of my variations, and I figured it transposes to the normal Tarash. So let's see. After knight g to f3, Carlsen played knight f6, which was played, and Melkumian didn't play e5, he played bishop to d3, which I think is weird. Uh, so now I'm going to write down bishop to d3 is possible after knight f6, but I think e5 might be better. So. Now I already have a new idea. In my own analysis, I was only looking at knight g to f3, knight f6, e5, because I know this pattern, and I don't know this. I actually don't know if the knight is on f6 and not chased away yet that I should play bishop to d3 simply defending the, the pawn. So now in my essay, I'm writing down Melkumian uh, Carlsen, Melkumian Carlsen, Melkumian played bishop to d3. Is that a good idea? Why would I just defend my pawn and not chase the knight back to d7? So this will be my... Uh, part of the essay. So let's continue. Carlsen played c5, c3, and I think I've seen this position before. Okay, let's look at this c5. What position did we have here? Wait, uh, it was, I think, after h6, uh, bishop to d3, c5, and now I was looking at the move knight g to f3. And now, if uh, black plays knight to f6, which I didn't look at, look at, I was looking at c4 and cd4. If he plays this, I can play c3, and we have just transposed to the same position. So, okay, now I'm going to write down uh, the possibility of c3 being played after c5, and Melkumian was playing that. And I'm obviously, in this position now, I'm not going to look at only one game, I'm going to look at more games. So, uh, once again, on Lee Chess, open, uh, opening explorer, you are going to find more games. As, you're going, as you are going more and more in depth, there aren't going to be that many games. At some point, there are going to be none. But still, you are going to have new ideas for the at least first 10 or 15 moves. So this is going to be stage two of me correcting my own mistakes. Okay, so after I've done that, let me turn this off. I'm returning to my game, back to the beginning. And now I already have an essay with my own ideas. I have an essay with Grandmaster ideas from several games. I will usually look at five or 10 games simultaneously. After I've done that, I'm going to have an essay like, like this. I'm going to have three pages. The first page is my ideas. The second page is Grandmaster ideas. And the third page is going to be written down now. And that will be the uh, engine analysis. Turn on the engine. Look at the game. e4, e6, d4, d5, knight d2, h6. The engine says slightly better for white. The engine says knight g to f3 is the best move. I've looked at that. I played bishop to d3, uh, and I've considered knight g to f3, which is the best move. I've considered e takes d5, which is a slight error. It's not that good. Let's black equalize. So in my essay, I'm going to say e takes d equalizes, and I'm going to try to figure out why it equalizes. Let's see. 
takes. Bishop d3 was my move as well. I played knight f6 for black here, but let's say here. I played knight to f3, but c4 can be played. Okay, I, I guess it equalizes because it's the exchange French, so I, I don't want to enter the exchange French anyway. So let's go on. Uh, e takes d5 is no good. c3, slightly better for white. c5 was my move. Knight g to f3 was my move. Knight c6 was my move. Bishop to d3. And now we were looking at uh, the positions with cd4, cd4, d4, knight e4. Bishop b4, check. Okay, let's look at that. c takes d4, c takes d4, d takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop b4, check. I should cover with the knight. The position is equal according to the engines, and I was correct. I get to play with an isolated queen spawn, which I don't really like. Black can blockade. Black can even exchange here. No, he can't exchange, but he can blockade with the knight and definitely get his knight into d5. So I'm going to write down the engines. Think c3 is equal, but the position is uncomfortable for white because I have an isolated queen spawn, so a structural deficit. So let's go on. And I'm going to do that for every single move throughout the game. And at the end of the analysis, I'm going to have three essays, which I'm going to uh, put together into one essay about each move and about the ideas most importantly. So now when I have done that, I'm going to uh, go online or go play against myself or go play against the engine on leeches. I'm going to set up the position after h6 and go uh, continue from here. Just play the engine if you have nobody else to play. And then I'm going to try to implement my own ideas. After I have finished the game, I'm going to do the assessment of how I did this time. And hopefully after 3 to 5 or 10 games, when I encounter this in the next game, I'm going to be able to face it as a much stronger player in the variation. And often, if your game is online, and this game of mine is online, people are going to look at it, see, oh, he lost against this, I'm going to prepare something similar. I've actually had uh, one player play uh, instead of h6, a6, I don't want to get into that, I lost the game horribly, it was a lower rated opponent. So I think this was because I lost the h6 game and she wanted to find something to stress me out and get me out of my prep and I was out of my prep. So okay, uh, let's uh, go over the steps once again. So the first thing should be think with your own head, try to find your own ideas, write them down. Look at what strong players play, look at Grandmaster games on each move, write their ideas down. After that, go through the game the third time, go with an engine, write what the engine says down. After that, uh, put down an essay all together, check your, uh, check your mistakes, check how you plan to correct them, play practice games. And the best thing is, the next time you're going to face, in this case, the French defense, you can just take your essay out and say, hmm, okay, I played this, I should play this, blah, 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 blah. Your preparation is going to be much easier. Okay, I hope this helps. Please let me know what you think about this method. Let me know if you do something similar. Please let me know if you can help me improve the method. I would really like to either do it faster or do it more efficiently. Uh, Please give me your thoughts in the comment below. Thanks very much for watching. Once again, hope this helps and stay tuned for more chess. See you later. Bye-bye.